I like to make it a point not to bash on others, but today I am beyond my limits. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit of bashing on men. Seriously, monopora eating nudibranchs. If you've ever dealt with them, you know my pain and the struggle. And if you haven't dealt with them, well then definitely you're gonna wanna watch this video so that you have the tools that you need to prevent them from even being a problem in the first place and heaven forbid they get past your defenses, well you're gonna know what you need to do to help keep them at bay and get them under control. So stay tuned and let's get started. Hillary here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I've been lucky enough to not have to deal with monopora eating nudibranchs up until recently, and so I thought it's the perfect opportunity for me to share with you a little bit about them, starting on how they get into our tanks. Anytime we add stuff to our tank, we're opening ourselves up to the possibility of pests. Now, especially monoporas, when we add them, they could come in on the corals themselves, but they could also come in on the frag plugs. Anytime we're adding live rock or even other sorts of rock that's come in from other systems that are infected, that is also an opportunity to bring these pests into our tanks. Now what makes them tricky is one, their size. They're really, really small. Think like one to seven millimeters in size. They're tiny, so they're not the easiest thing to see. Another strike against us is that a lot of the time they're most active at night. I don't know about you, but I don't spend a ton of time observing my tank in the middle of the night. So unless that's the case, I might not even see them for a while. Now, one thing that does work out in our favor is like the name suggests, they eat monopora, which means they're going to be drawn to their food source, which hopefully should make it easier for us to find them. Now, something that I want to mention is that there's another type of nudibranch that we have in our tanks that we want in our tanks that looks very similar to the monopora eating nudibranch, and that is the bergia. Now, you can tell the two apart because bergia have antenna that are significantly longer than that of the monopora eating nudibranch. All right, let's talk now a little bit about the life cycle of these guys. Back in 2020, a paper was published that looks into the genetics of these guys and a little bit of their life history. So we suspect that they can live for up to a year and they become sexually mature around 40 days old. Now, once they are sexually mature, they can start laying eggs. Now, the eggs, it's going to be a whole bunch of tiny eggs inside one little cluster. And when you look on the monopora, you can find these eggs clustered together on the tissue or on the dying skeleton. Now, something interesting I read in one of the forums, and I would love to hear from you if you've experienced this, someone once said that they can live in a tank without a food source for up to two months. Whew. The thought of that is a little bit scary. So I'd love to hear if you have had experiences like that before. Leave a comment, let me know. Now, if you don't know that you have these guys in your tank, how would you go about finding them? Well, just like a lot of things in your tank, you wanna spend time observing your tank and the animals in it. And a lot of times those observations are going to be where you figure out that something's wrong. So if you've got monoporas in your tank and you notice areas on them where the color is a little bit muted or faded, and you see areas that the tissue has died, especially if there's a very defined line on there, those are all gonna be red flags that maybe it's time to look for some monopore eating nudibranchs at the base where that tissue is dying off and around the area where the color is faded. Also, you're gonna to wanna to look in areas that don't get a lot of light. You might find them there as well. So now you know you have monopore eating nudibranchs, how do you get rid of them? Well, just like with any issue in my tank, my first and favorite method of control is always to use biological controls. And in this case, I'm specifically talking about wrasses. So you can get wrasses like the six line wrasse, the yellow chorus wrasse, and even sometimes the melanaris wrasse, and they are going to work to help get rid of these monopora eating nudibranchs. 
Now, the method that I've personally been using quite frequently is manual removal. This requires going in and looking at the corals, especially around those dead zones on the corals, and using tools to remove them. So there's a lot of different tools that you can use. One is a pipette. I like to use that to remove the adults. It allows me to individually pull them off and remove them to get rid of them. But you could also use things like a water pick to spray them off. Just make sure you're doing that in a separate container. You don't want to spray them back out into your tank. You could also use a turkey baster for that. If you've seen some of the old Reef Builder Studio videos, Evan does a video where he shows how to remove them and demonstrates this method so you could definitely check that out. Now there's also a bunch of tools that are made for fragging that you could use. They're small and meant to get into some of those tiny spaces so those could be really useful in helping to scrape off some of those eggs from the corals. Now you could also use something as simple as a toothbrush, especially on the areas where the tissue is already dead and bleached. You can get a container and use a toothbrush to brush those eggs into that container and then rinse it again. Now, one thing that I cannot leave off is coral dips. So a lot of the dips that are out there, there one might not fully kill the adults. It probably will stun them, but it might not kill them. Secondly, with the dips is it doesn't touch the eggs. The eggs are still gonna be able to survive and withstand those dips. So once you do a dip, don't think that you're done. You are probably gonna need to come back in and dip after five to 10 days to make sure you get those newly hatched young. Now, one thing I do like to do when I am dipping the corals for the monopore eating nudibranchs is I like to, in my dip container, use a turkey baster and make sure that there's steady water movement around the coral tissue that's live. Now, the reason for this is some of those nudibranchs like to hang on tight and having that water flow and that pressure of the water helps to dislodge them. Now, after I have rinsed them in the dip, I will go ahead and have another container of clean water while I'll just swish and rinse them around again before adding them back to the tank that they're being quarantined in. Now the last thing that I want to say is prevention. You can prevent these guys from getting in your tank and I'm talking about dips just now. Dipping is one of the best ways to prevent the adults from getting into your tank. Like I said, if there's eggs still on there, those would actually be found if you quarantined them. So there's the second one. You wanna quarantine for approximately two weeks, give or take. That should be more than enough if any eggs are on your corals. If you quarantine them, they should hatch out. So dip them again before you put them in your tank and hopefully that should take care of them. Now, even if you don't think you have monopore eating nudibranchs, it never hurts to spend time observing your tank just to make sure that everything is going smooth and that nothing is awry. All right, before I say goodbye, I just wanna remind you that if you're dealing with monopore eating nudibranchs, please don't give up. All of us have dealt with struggles and pests in the past, and there's a whole community of people out there that are willing to help you, that want to see you succeed, and will share some of their tips and successes with you. Now lastly, if you need help picking out any sort of dip for your corals or any of the other products that I've talked about today in this video, don't hesitate to reach out, leave us a comment, send us a message. We'd be more than happy to help you. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.